Uh, continuing with the videos on advanced ship stability today's video is on the understanding of the severe wind and rolling diagram and how the stability of the vessel is anticipated uh, for the various conditions of wind pressure acting on the vessel so this is also known as the weather criterion for ship stability so as you see on your screens, uh, I have drawn the stability diagram or what we call as the GZ curve uh, where the values of GZ are plotted against the various angles of heel as experienced by vessels due to wind pressure of varying strengths. Now GZ as you know is the writing lever which acts on the vessel when the vessel starts to heel on one side it is the writing lever that tends to bring the vessel back to her upright condition heel as you know is different from a list of a ship although in both the cases the ship actually uh, what should i say heels or lists on one side but uh, heel is due to the natural elements of the weather or like moorings tightening of moorings or over tightening of moorings but it mainly refers to the action of the weather elements on the vessel due to which the ship lists or heels on one side now here what we consider is that if uh, the wind pressure is so strong that it is causing heel whether the ship's stability condition or the writing lever formed will be sufficient to bring the vessel back to the upright condition this is the importance of the severe wind and rolling diagram all right so as you see here the value of gz is plotted against the values of angle of heel so angle of heel is on the x axis and gz is on the y axis and uh, there are different angles marked here such as theta naught theta 2 theta 1 theta c i'll talk about all these angles uh, we'll also talk about the IW2 and IW1 on the left side of your screen that stands for the wind healing moment and uh, the area that is formed by the curves and what is the importance of it and uh, let's start let's get started then all right so the weather criterion and minimum stability requirements should govern the minimum requirements for passenger as well as cargo ships of 24 meters in length and over so this is diagram is for all ships uh, that are more 24 meters or more than 24 meters in the above diagram as you see area b should be equal to or greater than area a this is the most important bit of the diagram all right now how is area a and b calculated as you can see they have been calculated for the values of the wind healing lever or wind healing moment that is iw1 or iw2 but how is that calculated how is iw1 or iw2 calculated so below as you can see iw1 formula is given here iw1 is equal to the formula p multiplied by a multiplied by z divided by thousand times g times a triangle shape i'll tell you what each of them stand for as we proceed so p here stands for a wind pressure or wind force of 504 newton per meter square area of the vessel a here stands for the projected lateral area above waterline now why is the area above waterline considered because that is the area or what we known as the windage area that is the area on which the wind can actually act so that the vessel may heel over on one side then we have z z is the vertical distance between the center of a and approximately half of the draft a is the area of curve that you can see above then g is of course equal to acceleration which is equal to 9.81 meters per second square and the triangle shape that you see above stands for the vessel's displacement IW2 on the other hand is calculated by multiplying IW1 by the value 1.5. Both these values are in meters and plotted on the GZ curve. 
above diagram i showed you theta naught as well so theta naught is the angle of heel under action of steady wind as you see in the diagram above that is the action of the angle of heel under action of the steady wind this should be limited to 16 degrees or 80 degrees of the angle of deck edge immersion whichever is lesser of the two theta 1 is the angle of roll to windward due to wave action all right if the vessel rolls over to the windward side due to wave action theta 1 is calculated by multiplying 109 by a constant k x1 x2 under root r times s and it is referred to as degrees i'll tell you what each of these values stand for so if you can see here k stands for bilge or bar keel factor which is between 0.7 and 1 x1 stands for the breadth to draft ratio factor normally between 0.8 and 1 x2 stands for the block coefficient of the vessel normally between 0.75 and 1 r here stands for 0 0.73 plus or minus 0 0.6 multiplied by og times d where og is the distance between the center of the gravity and the water line now this value is positive if center of gravity is below water line and negative if center of gravity is below sorry this should be above water line if center of gravity is above water line and negative if center of gravity is below water line and that is why this is either positive or negative depending on if the center of gravity is above water line or below water line s in the under root is standing for the rolling period factor which is between 0 0.035 and 1 t is the rolling period which is also equal to 2 times cb divided by the under root of gm and the rolling period is calculated in seconds now where c is equal to this value here b is equal to molded breadth d is equal to mean molded draft l is equal to water line length of the vessel and g is equal to gm fluid so as you can see i have expanded on each of the formulas uh, so this is here and this is here in case you were not sure and this comes from here and uh, for a rolling period of t you can actually find out the rolling period factor from the table so there are tables available in your stability booklet from where you can put in the rolling period and then find out the rolling period factor for the rolling period so the rolling period is of course in seconds and then against that you can find you can calculate it at what rate the vessel is rolling and you can calculate it for that the only thing i skipped above was the angle theta 2 angle theta 2 stands for angle of flooding or 50 degrees whichever is least so it is the angle at which the deckage immerses completely in the water and the flooding starts to take place so if you see above here each of these values are provided and the meaning is provided as well if you have any questions regarding any of these values make sure that you write in the comment section or contact me i'll be happy to answer if uh, i know the answer of course but i will be happy to answer in the comment section and uh, let me know what you thought about this video guys all the best with your studies bye for now